John Kent, Kent's Firestone, Batesville, Arkansas, and it's always my pleasure to get to visit with you, sir. David, you're looking good. The day before this, when I came in, I didn't get to visit with you because I couldn't get in the door. Hardly. The door. It, that was good. Was, Why didn't any place to park on the driveway? People were getting service. People were buying tires. People were just, it was a busy, busy day. And that's the way you guys like that's it around That's the way here. we like it. That's the way it stays most of the time. <laughs> Folks come in and say, well, can I get it right now? Well, we just, we'll get you, but, you know. Uh, Might be a and that's too. what I told you the last time I talked to you. I was watching that spot last night. And the last thing I said was, Folks, it may take a little longer than what you used to have, but we will get you done, or we will take you to work, or we will bring your car to you, or whatever is necessary to do, we'll get the job done for you. The one thing you don't want to do, you don't want to pull into a place that's got a shop where they go, yeah, we don't have anybody back there in the shop right now. Yeah, bring it on in. You're the first customer of the day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's probably not a very good shop. <laughs> might, might be. That's right. I've seen some of those, you know. So how's the, t how's the tire inventory? How's, how's the, uh, the receiving of the tires, the shipping of the tires? How's that going for you right now? Well, we're still having problems with, with some of the inventory. Okay. Um, it's getting somewhat better. Uh, they're beginning to get the pipelines filled up again. That was the real problem. We had, they had just, most of the manufacturers were producing all they could produce, but then their backup stock warehouses that got drained, and we were having to wait for them to fill up again. So we've, we've been out of some product, but we've had other product that we could bring in of equal quality and, and get that pretty much done. Um, our buy three, get one free fusion line, was a critical issue for a while, mm -hmm. but they confirmed almost everything I ordered yesterday. Good. That'll come next week. We got in a big shipment of fusions and other tires yesterday, so the it's it's getting a whole lot better. It's getting well, you got to have better. tires to sell tires, and it's just like anything. You know, the pan pandemic slowed down a bunch of things in every facet of business, from a grocery store to a bank to uh, you know automobile dealerships, and, and and we see the effects of it. But we're getting back to normal slowly but surely. Yes, yes, and we're grateful for everybody that, that comes. Uh, and we do have some sales going on that, that are stimulating sales right now. And Crystal, what are you doing? Come here, Crystal. I want to introduce you folks to, to our latest addition to the family at Kent's. Come on up here. Can you see her? Folks, This everybody in baseball knows Crystal Robbins. <laughs> But Crystal uh, joined our team Monday. She has 20 years of experience in the automobile industry. And she's smart as a whip because she's already learned more than I knew about everything I was trying to teach her, see? But we just wanted you to see Crystal. We wanted to welcome her. Do you want to say anything to the folks? Just she, come see me. Just come see her, that's right. She's right over here at our brand new desk. We've remodeled the inside of the store. And uh, now when you come in the door, you don't have to just wait on Chris. Right. Chris is going to grab you. Uh, she's going to grab you and get so, you signed up ready. But we're glad to have you Thank with you. us. Thank Welcome you. to Kent's. I'm excited to be here. Go back to work. Okay. You got it. <laughs> that was easy enough, wasn't it? Yeah. She said, I told her yesterday she was going to be on the spot. She said, what? <laughs> I said, come cleaned up. Yes, sir. Come cleaned so, up. Great addition to your staff. Great right? addition. You bet. Um, Service. service? No, no. Uh, I was just going to say. Go ahead. I'm training her to take my place, you see. You see so. Well, and the way I see it, Mr. Kent, uh, she has been trained from the best, and she is learning, and she already knows a lot. It may be long before you're not the consultant anymore. <laughs> Amen. Amen, brother. That'd Amen. be good. That'd be good. See, we, good we, we get her ready to do the spots with you. you That's see. exactly right. That's exactly so, right. But tell you how good the tire business is, just about... 30 minutes before you got here, I had to have them clean this tire up and put it back on display because they had sold the one that was on display. And I said, we can't do a spot with an empty oh, tire. No, no, so, we got to have a tire right so here. This one has a $60 rebate on a set of four. Our, almost our full Firestone line has that right now. It, uh, you'll get $90 when you put it on your Firestone account. You don't have a Firestone account, we'll get you a Firestone account. So instead of getting 60, you'll get 90. And uh, that runs all the way through about the middle of July. Okay. And then we'll pick up another Bridgestone uh, rebate program at that time. So 
Guess what's coming up? There's no telling what's Fourth of July. Oh, no, if it's coming Fourth up, of yeah. July. We'll give you the day off if you want it. Thank you. You sir. may have a sports program that night, so you can't take off. Or so. I may be at a ball game if they're playing. Amen, the brother. Amen, you bet. Hey, we're seeing people getting ready to do those Fourth of July trips. And thank God now you can take some trips. Yep. You can feel safe if you're vaccinated. Uh, a lot of people feel safe and not, but still, nevertheless, lots of people are going to travel this year. Lots of people are already traveling. The airlines are booked to, to capacity, uh, and a lot of the reason for that is they cut off so many scheduled flights during all of that, and they had to, but now they're beginning to ramp back up. Gasoline prices have kind of stabilized, so it'll help you, help you make that trip, and... Um, I thought at the beginning of this gasoline thing, it was probably going to be 4 or $5 a gallon by now, but it's still in the mid-twos. Yeah, it's okay. So, yeah, yeah, it's okay. And you've adjusted to that. Uh, it'd make a vacation trip terrible if it was $5 a yeah, gallon. That's exactly right. But at two fifty, two twenty-five, dollars we're going to get you, in there and you go. You can go. But you want that car ready, right? Yeah, now, ready. it's already getting hot out there, right? It's hot today. And you turn on that air conditioner... And it's not blowing quite as cold as you thought it should. But let me tell you what we've, we're finding in probably 20 to 30 percent of the it's not cooling right cases. There's a filter in that car called the cabin air filter. That is what your air conditioning system breathes through. And if that fan is not blowing or it doesn't feel as cold as it was, we're finding that those cabin air filters, which lots of people don't even know they have, or just stopped up something off, doing their job. They were catching that dirt instead of it getting in the, into the coils in that condenser and the evaporator, it's catching the dirt, but it won't let the air flow. We had a lady in day before yesterday, my air just not working. Hooked up to it, perfect, perfect. perfect. Both pressures on both sides were fine. We could stick the thermometer in, feel cold air, but it wasn't blowing much. Pull that cabin air filter out, <laughs> you couldn't even see through it. Right? Brought it in, showed it to her, said, this is all you have wrong, you know. Instead of costing her $150 to get it fixed, it cost about 45 Right. So think about having your cabin air filter checked before you go on a trip. Yeah, very important because you certainly don't want to be there. And you don't want to have to suffer through the, well, I'll get it fixed when I get home type deal. And, you need to be cool when you're traveling in the summertime. And if you're going to Florida, you really want to be cool. <laughs> I guarantee yeah, yeah. you do. Because it's probably hotter down there than it is yes, up sure here. Is. So anyway, keep that in mind, folks. It's just one of the tips that I wanted to, to give you today. Also, bring that car in. We'll check it over for you. Make sure it's good to go. Get your oil changed. Get your tires rotated. If you need a set of tires, we've got the sales going on. we got buy three, get one free. Right over here sits 225, 65, 17 Michelin. You didn't think I'd ever say that at Kent's well, Firestone. I didn't. But I bought those at a deal. Buy three, get one free while they last. Wow. And that's the top of the line Michelin right there. I had a wholesaler that had a carload of those, and I tried to buy a bunch of them. <laughs> Well, the thing that you do is you, you get deals so you can pass those deals on to your That's your what customers. we're doing. That's what you do. Yeah, that's, that's saving you about $180 a set of tires. Wow, that's so, awesome. And that way, hey, you know, you can use that $180 to pay for a hotel. Pocket change. Or feed your family. For a meal, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You bought anything out you know, lately? If you're in Florida, that's what it's going to cost you. That's right. You've got a family of four. That's right. So we remember when we used to go, and if we spent fifteen dollars on the family, we thought we're not going to do that again. You know, <laughs> we could eat somewhere else for hard, six. Hard to get by for under a hundred anymore exactly if you got the right. whole group with you. Exactly. And you're like me, probably when you're traveling with the kids. Guess who pays? Uh, pop, pop. Pop, 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 yeah. pop, uh -huh. pop, pop, always pays. That's right, that's <laughs> right. Well, I tell my children, you can either get it now or get it when I'm dead. There you that's, go. That's your inheritance. Yeah, we'll just spend it, you know. Spend it while you can. That's right. But anyway, we don't want to take all your money before you go on that trip. So what we're going to do is let you what? Drive away. With, with time, time to pay. pay. That's right. So we have two great programs on that where you can leave here with 
little or nothing down, right? And take the trip, take time to pay for it. You're getting over the trip. You're doing a little payment on the tires so that you still have some money to spend while you're on the road. You know, that's the motel that you can pay for, the gas you can pay for, the amusement parks that you can pay for. You know, people be going to Silver Dollar City. You don't want to go up in the hills and have a tire go bad, do you? <laughs> I don't. No. You don't want to go up in the hills and stop for a rest stop and get out and your car goes click, 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 click. That means it doesn't work. Well, check that battery for you, no charge. <laughs> if all you need is a last minute air, you're going to leave before everybody opens up. Oh, I've got a low tire. Come on out to front of Kent's Firestone. Got a free air pump out there. It's on 24 hours a day. Absolutely free, and That's, that means no quarters that you have to pump in there. Yeah. Free is free. Now, we came in the other day, and there was a quarter laying on top of the machine. I guess the guy had it out, <laughs> and he just left it. I felt guilty about getting free air. Yeah, I don't I'm know, but uh, we thought it was funny. I got a quarter's worth. Yeah. I got a quarter's worth. I got a quarter's worth. So anyway, folks, we appreciate your business. We appreciate your patience. Come on in and see Crystal and... Chris and Ronnie, and I'll be in the back office, and I'll say hi. <laughs> and if, if I have to, I'll wait on you. <laughs> you if know, you have if, to. If I have to. Yes, sir. Because you know I will. People sit saying, what are you doing here? I say, I'm not here. You can't yeah, see me. Not, yeah, I'm not here. I, don't pay any attention to the guy behind the curtain. That's right. Thank you for your business. We're here to take care of you Monday through Friday, 7 to 5.30. Saturday, 7 to 1. You need a ride to work in the morning, we'll get you there, get your car done, get it back to you. He's John Kent, and he is the consultant at Kent's Firestone, and been a lot more than that down through the years to all of us, in Batesville, in Newport, and around the world. Thank you, my friend. Thank you, David, and go Redbirds. Welcome back to the program, Mr. Ted Hall, who is the Executive Director of uh, White River Area Agency on Aging. And uh, Mr. Hall, it's always my pleasure. Good to see you today, oh, sir. Good to see you. Always uh, good to visit with you all. And so, you know, David, we're getting through the COVID. I think we have. We're on the downside, you think? We're on the downside of that, uh, with that big mountain that we had to climb for Absolutely. a while, for sure. You know, you know I'm really proud of, uh, of our employees at uh, White River Area Agency on Aging because... Uh, I would be proud of them anyway because we've been in business over 40 years, David, and uh, service, and it's long before I got here, but we're just trying to continue to serve people. And uh, this COVID uh, was such a devastating uh, thing to the country and certainly here in Arkansas, but you know, we were able to work through all that. We worked every day and uh, we served the people that we needed to serve. And so that's what I want to really do the program today is just a uh, tribute to our employees and that now that we're getting back to COVID, uh, we still are serving people. Uh, we're still needing to hire more people. Uh, David, as we were talking before we got on camera this morning, is that uh, we have uh, several slots open and they can call at 1-800-382 3205 are here at the corporate office and at 870-612-3000, which is the easy number. Uh, if they're interested in employment, uh, because we need good people, we, we need people that uh, want to serve seniors and that they have a mindset of uh, helping, helping people because that's what uh, White River Area Agency on Aging is all about, is serving the seniors. And as you know, I'm I go to Little Rock and I'm in Washington, D.C. because we're always continuing to be the voice for seniors. And our elected officials need that kind of information that we can provide because we're out there in the trenches every day. Well, you talk about being in the trenches and, and, and talking about your staff and, and these aides that have to go into the houses. And even during this time of COVID, uh, our job didn't stop. We had to continue to serve. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, one of the, the, the uh, thing about uh, the service, we even had the Department of Human Services, who we do not work for them, but we have a relation with them. And, and the governor uh, wanted to make sure 
that all the seniors in Arkansas would be in touch, whether uh, by Meals on Wheels, which we have, but that he knew that not all seniors would be in touch with that. So he asked DHS to act, actually call the triple A's in mm -hmm. Arkansas. There's eight that, guys that do, gals that do what I do as far as directors. And so they asked him, how do you reach out to people? Because we don't serve every senior. Right. And so basically uh, we kind of gave them a plan. We were on conference calls with them. And so we gave them some ideas how they might reach out. And it took them, uh, uh, they had to pull all their staff and uh, they started making calls to make sure that seniors were being contacted because it was important that the most vulnerable people and uh, people that have high needs be make sure that they were visited throughout this uh, pandemic. So that's on the downside. And so we're ready to kind of ramp it back up we need to hire some more people uh, to come and work for us. Uh, we've got jobs and uh, we've got people to serve. So really uh, today, two things, uh, David, is that we say attaboys to our folks that have been in the trenches all during this time. And then also the folks wanting to come and uh, have a job, we've got uh, great benefits here. And so if they like working with seniors and service, then uh, White River is someplace they ought to look at. Well, we certainly encourage those folks who uh, would even give it a thought, and maybe who have never worked with seniors before, and you think, you know, I've got a heart for, for, for that, you know, group of people. And, and uh, uh, it doesn't matter how old you are, it just matters, do you have, do you love the, the senior citizens? That, that, the that's a good point, Dave. Of. Some of our best folks are folks that are over 50, 60. Right. And a lot of those folks that had worked in, in a nursing home or in the hospital where they had a set schedule. Well, with us, they can work two hours in the morning, two hours in the afternoon, and it's very flexible how, how we do that because our clients we serve want to, are flexible. And so anyway, it's a great place. We, we've, uh, like I said, we've been in business a long time. We're going to continue to be in business, but uh, we just need to make sure uh, we get as many people we can out there to serve the people that uh, need to be served. He's Mr. Ted Hall. We're at White River Area Agency on Aging. We have jobs available. He's giving you the numbers, and you can see the other numbers at the bottom of the screen. And uh, we encourage you to give us a call if you're looking for some employment and want to work with some great people, starting at the top with the Executive <laughs> Director, Mr. Ted Hall. Thank you, sir. Thanks, David. Batesville filming today at White River Health System and uh, we get to visit with Ashton Rogers on my far left and Christy Clark in the middle and uh, we're going to find out a little bit about these ladies and what they do at uh, White River Health System and we'll just start with you Ashton. My name is Ashton Rogers. I am an RN at our WRMC campus. I've been there about nine years and currently I am over nursing recruitment and I'm the patient experience coordinator. Christy, tell us a little bit about you. I'm Christy Clark. I'm the employment coordinator. I've been with um, White River Health System for six years and I basically do the recruitment for the ancillaries and the other positions and also do the onboarding. Well, we're here to talk about opportunities at White River Health System for employment. What can y'all tell us about what opportunities are available? So many, um, when they think about the hospital, they think of healthcare related fields, but we have a diverse opportunity at uh, the hospital, anywhere from barista, dietary, EVS, um, construction, maintenance, lab, um, registration, reception, the list goes on. Um, and then of course we also have nursing services. Well, I mean, there, anytime you talk about job opportunities and, and everybody always looking for good employees, and one of the things that employees are always looking for is a good job opportunity. And one of the things that they look at, we start talking about benefits of the job. So who can tell us about the benefits of the jobs of working at WRMC, White River Health System? Um, that would be me. We have quite a bit of benefits with White River Health System to help meet the diverse needs of our employees. We have health insurance, dental, we have um, off the job accident, cancer, we have um, survival flights, all types of insurance wise. And then we have the 401k um, for your retirement benefits. And we also have local discounts to some of the local companies here in Batesville and surrounding areas. 
lots of nursing positions available yes. here and we certainly yes. want to you know pass that information along yes so we have patient care tech positions we also have cna which is a certified um, nursing assistant and certified patient care tech we have lpn rn um, our shifts are 7 a.m to 7 p.m and vice versa um, if you're interested in the er we have some mid-shift opportunities um, we have full-time, part-time, PRN, um, and currently we have a PRN-RN agreement, um, which is $40 an hour. Um, and this position is more flexible than a full-time position, um, but you do not get the benefits that Christy mentioned. So. Uh, clerical positions available also? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, we have options for clericals that's available in our patient access department, um, central schedulers, patient access representatives. It's available for all shifts. They are all full-time positions, and they're also available at different areas, like Cherokee Village or Batesville or Mountain View. Well, kind of off script a little bit, just to ask, not part of what we planned on asking, but uh, uh, what's so good about working at, at this place? Why, why would you encourage someone to come to work here? Personally, um, I started as um, an RN floor nurse um, right out of school. Um, they really have. Um, assisted me in growing, um, becoming a manager of our behavioral health units, becoming the patient experience coordinator. So I would say growth opportunities for sure. Um, and then it's just a family atmosphere. It's a smaller hospital. Um, so you, you know everyone, you're comfortable with everyone. So that's, that's why I choose to work there. Christy, she mentions about knowing everyone and you bo both of you girls, Batesville Pioneer, so y'all know most everybody in town. Kind of tell us what's been fun for you, you know, with your, with your job. What, what, why would you encourage somebody to come to work here? Um, I love working here. I came here about six years ago and when I started I had a broken leg and everybody come together as a family to help me around, get to know things, also as a team player. I mean, everybody works as a team. There's a lot of engagement opportunities that we have here. We have little committees, you know, we do fun stuff too. We had a fun truck food, um, food day not too long ago. So anyway, we just have lots of fun things to do. and Fun place to work, mm -hmm. good people to work for, good people to work with. If somebody is interested in, in uh, you know, procuring one of these positions, how do we go about doing that? You go to whiteriverhealthsystem.com slash careers and you fill out an application online and you can submit your resume with it. If you have any questions, you can contact me um, in HR, Christy Clark at 870-262-6145. If you have nursing specific questions, you can contact me, Ashton Rogers, 870-262-1226 or you can email me at arogers at wrmc.com. Ladies, it's always my pleasure to come to White River Health Systems and find out what is going on. It's good, but we have job opportunities available and you have all the information that you need to get in touch with us. Thank you. Thank you. Tammy Gallup from the Dairy Queen, the Grill and Chill in Batesville. It's always my great pleasure to come in and get to interview her as opposed to Mr. Strecker. Mr. Oh, yeah. Strecker is usually giving me the runaround about something or telling me that I'm not attending church regularly. <laughs> He'll I, do that. Yeah, I need to be there next Sunday or he's coming to get me. But how's Tammy Gallup? I'm doing good. How about you? I'm well. Dairy Queen has been busy, busy, busy. Busy. Yes, we have been very busy and, and very thankful for all our customers. Absolutely. <laughs> and uh, along the way, a little glitch here and there with something might blow out and cost you a little hectic okay. time for an hour or two, but everything's good. And everything's good. Just got to keep on going. There you go. Uh, we've got a lot of stuff on the menu, a lot of things to talk about today. And the, uh, let's just get right after it. Tell us everything that's uh, everything that's important if you need to know about Dairy Queen. If Dairy Queen, if you don't already know. Well, you know, we still got the summer blizzard menu. But this month, our Girl Scout Thin Menace, the blizzard of the month. Okay. And we still got our shakes, the hazelnut, the raspberry bliss, the uh, mint chip, and then you got all those other flavors you can have, chocolate, strawberry, Reese's, Oreo. We were talking about the raspberry chip. Or the ra was raspberry, raspberry, mint, raspberry chip. Is that raspberry right? chip blizzard, I mean shake. And that's one of those that doesn't 
hit me as saying, oh man, I'd like that. But you say that is an enormous seller for you. It is a good seller for us. People like the raspberries. They do. They like that raspberry bliss blizzard too. <laughs> oh man, I love it. Just, just give me a vanilla. <laughs> just give me a vanilla. I don't know. I really like that Girl Scout thin mint. <laughs> Pretty good. Isn't it? I can eat the whole box of those cookies, so you know. <laughs> if a person needed some chicken, we have chicken several different ways here at Dairy Queen. Yep. Tell us what we got. We got the chicken strips. We got a chicken sandwich, crispy or grilled. We've got the rotisserie bites. Yep. Um, that's been a very big hit. Good deal. And especially with the salads, and then it comes as a meal, like a chicken strip. Um, we've got, that's the only it. Well, the burgers, chicken. I guess if burgers. you needed a single, a double, a triple, or a, I, I love the double with an extra patty or two yep. to kind of stack it high. Uh, burgers are pretty good and always have been. Yep. Talk a little bit about the burger menu. Well, on our well six dollar meal deal, we got the double cheeseburger, we got the bacon cheeseburger, or we got the deluxe cheeseburger still, and then also the three piece chicken strips. <laughs> got to have the chicken in there, don't you? But you know, on our our we have that half pound. We've got the flamethrower. Do we still have gravy? We got lots of gravy. <laughs> <laughs> lots of gravy. You talk about that chicken, and you get that nice fresh hot chicken out there, and those nice fresh French fresh. fries, and you open up that little thing of gravy that you get that's really a big thing of gravy and then you I'm gonna dip my french fry in there before. Oh, it's, it's really good people don't realize everybody it. does that. <laughs> yeah, everybody so. dips their french fry into their Dairy Queen gravy because it's, it's so good it's yep. so good. I guess if somebody had a birthday coming up we could take care of them also tell us about the birthday cakes. Yes we got our cakes it's Father's Day coming up so yep. make sure you order a Father's Day cake. Um, Get him something good. Then not only do we got cakes, we got a variety of novelties, and that's really been a big hit the novelties have. We've got the cherry dilly bar, the heat dilly bar, the non-dairy dilly bar, which that's for people who are lactose intolerant. And uh, we got the no sugar added dilly bar. Okay. We do got we have the dilly bar? Huh? Just the dilly bar? And the regular dilly bar. <laughs> dilly but we got bar. a butterscotch dilly and bar, a too. Butterscotch. <laughs> butterscotch dilly Lots of variety. <laughs> Back in the olden days, you just went and got a dilly bar. Yeah. Or the sandwich. Or you know, a DQ sandwich. sandwich. You know. Not an ice cream sandwich, a DQ sandwich. We still got the Buster bar, too, for the, yeah. the novelties. And then yeah. we got a fudge bar now. We've got the vanilla bar. Wow. So we got a variety of novelties as well. Novelties, I like that. That's oh, yeah. DQ Grill and Chill novelties from the chill department. Exactly. I know things are busy for you and they're hectic for you. You probably need to get back to work. We appreciate you, as always, taking time to tell us uh, uh, what's going on good at Dairy Queen. And uh, we're into the, the heat of the summer and it yep. hadn't been real hot, but it's been real rainy. So it's we're, in the, very we're in the rainy, rainy season. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I'm ready for the rain to move on out. <laughs> She's Tammy Gallant. She's the Dairy Queen grill and chill lady who is in charge. We thank you so much. Good to see you again, Tammy. Good seeing you. This is Dr. Gavin McDowell at Customized Vision Care in the Village Mall in Newport, Arkansas. I am not. I'm David Black. But don't y'all like his new glasses? Tell us about your new glasses. <laughs> These aren't new glasses. I know, but they look good on you, though. I have to ask well, you that. thank you. I've been asking you that for six months now. I like those glasses, the first time though. he asked me on, on camera. On the air. I yeah. know, but I like those. And how Did would you, you not like them the last five or six times? You asked if I've always there? liked them, but I've never got a chance to talk about them on the air and, okay. and, and how distinguished you look. Anyway, but these glasses just bring it out, and, and I'm sure that uh, it took a lot of thought process for you to bring that out for yourself, huh? Yes. <laughs> Is this going anywhere? No. <laughs> I was in the office just this past week yes. and, and went through a series of tests to check my vision in my one eye and <laughs> well, we checked them both but i mean you're not wrong <laughs> that's exactly right. but uh, you know people will, might want to know really what i mean some of those tests like the barn let's talk the about barn. the barn when you go in the you barn. sit down and you look at the barn and they give a little flash and then kind of the barn goes away and yeah. it comes in uh, tell us what all that does what all that tests so basically front to back okay so the what you're referring to is a it's a combination machine. It, it is a auto refractor. Basically, 
measures realistically just axial length, meaning how far the front surface of the cornea is, the front surface of the retina. So how okay. long your how long your eye or how deep your eye is, uh, and it does it in several different uh, planes, and so it lets us. It kind of gives me a ballpark of where we need to start back there as far as what your prescription is. Okay. And, and, and admittedly, it's kind of a cheater thing for me. It makes my job a little bit easier. I don't rely on it, but it's I, it's very accurate, more accurate than it has in some of the machines I've used in the past has, has been. And that's an old machine. Anyway, does that and also measures uh, uh, what's called uh, your corneal topography. Um, and it, your keratometry. Now, what that is is, yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Easy for you to say. Yeah, gazoon type. So uh, <laughs> I hadn't heard that here. <laughs> gazoon type. <laughs> so topography is basically it, it gives me a topographical map of your cornea. Okay. As as much as we'd love it to be, how uh, thinking how perfect we are. I mean, at least some of us. Uh, the cornea is not a perfectly smooth surface. It is. It's got ridges and, and, and lumps or whatever, and this thing maps out where those lumps are, and it helps me identify where areas of astigmatism may be that may not be detected on some of the other tests that we do, and it helps me to uh, measure progress of people who may have a corneal dystrophy or degeneration or some other things wrong with their cornea and stuff like that. The keratometry basically just gives me curvature. How much curve is to okay. that, cur uh, that, that cornea itself that helps me mostly with fitting contacts, you know, there because a contact lens has to be cupped in a, per, a particular way so it will won't just fall off the cornea or won't suck to the cornea where you can't get it off. Again. Right. So that, that's what that does. What else do we do in there? We poke uh, in the eye. We give a little poke on the eye that helps us measure pressure. Yeah, tell me about it because that's eye. a really easy deal to do. And, and, and used to we had to put a little numb and drop in your eye, and there's several different ways to measure pressure. Um, but the machine we have right now, just a lot, little tickle. You don't even have to numb the eye up. You barely even notice. You, remember when you used to go get the guys checked and they'd have a uh, little machine and be like, all right, don't move. Yes, I hated it. And you oh. go, go like this. <laughs> and, I, and to this day, I haven't had, it's what's called a non-contact tonometer. But anyway, I have not had one of those in this office in 16, over 16 years. Really? And, and don't be wrong, it, it was okay. It was non-invasive, but I still to this day have patients in the room and I'm about to look in their eye or whatever like, that's not that ear puff thing, is it? <laughs> I swear, you could get one of those instead of a liver biopsy. That's exactly right. Yes, sir. But, uh, but no, it, it, it's, it, we measure pressure in the eye because uh, there are dangers of having the pressure in the eye be too low or too high. Right. Uh, too low, it, you can, I mean, I'm not going to say the eye will collapse in on itself, but you will have some serious structural problems with that. But if it gets too high, that's usually what we relate to glaucoma, which can right. lead to vision loss and sometimes blindness if it's not treated properly. So anyway, that's a pressure thing. And then Let's see. What else have you done? You've done the clicky I, game. I, I did the clicky game. I love that. I, I lost. I, I, you, I, I scored that, a lot more on my right eye than I did my left eye. I know yes. that for a fact. You I almost got, got a high score in that eye. Did I? Yeah. Oh, no. cool, man. I was working on it hard. Nah, but that is, that is actually a measurement of, and you, you nailed it earlier before we were talking about this before we got on there, was that uh, it measures your peripheral vision. It, it, that's kind of a simplistic way of thinking about it because it actually measures the sensitivity that your retina has because okay. I, I mean I could get you back there with a Q beam and shine it directly <laughs> in your bad eye. You'd be like, yeah, I see it. But I mean, we're giving subtle little flickers and flashes and 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 just slight stimulation to see just how sensitive your retinas are. Because especially specifically in glaucoma patients, there are very characteristic field defects that can come from that. And so I want to know: is there any part of your retina not picking up light like it's supposed right. to? Right. And so that's, it's boring as all get out. Oh, it is. Well, it's and a, it takes a while. It just takes five minutes. But it's, uh, about, it's about seven minutes per eye. Th yeah. That's the new version. The old version was as big as a refrigerator, and you'd put, it'd be 15 minutes per eye. Oh, look. Oh. God. And I, I literally, one, we would have to have a technician babysit the patient to keep them awake because it is boring. <laughs> it is. Well, you got to concentrate on the one little, the one little dot yeah, in the middle. Look at the little dot. Blink when you want to. Don't look around. Just click the button when you see. Do you think you see something? That's right. 
I think I just did it. Did it. Did it. Did it. Did it. Did it. But it is such a valuable piece of information. Well, that those things are along in the process before we get back to 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 that gives you the information and gives you a great starting point to where you need to be for us when we get back there in the room when we start right, rolling right. the it, because I mean part of my job is just getting you to see well but I, I want to know not only do you, is your eye seen well but is it functioning well right because you can have glaucoma you can have pretty advanced glaucoma and see straight ahead in front of you with no problems whatsoever and not know that you're not seeing anything out here right your vision right. may not be affected whatsoever with some ocular conditions and some of these things that we do to test will let us know to make sure, yeah, you're seeing the way you're supposed to be seen, or are you just happen to be seen in spite of the train wreck that's going on inside your eyes? Well, we talk about it a lot here on this show about uh, uh, coming in and getting an examination, not so much to check the vision of the eye, but yeah. to check the health of the eye. Yeah, I, don't get me wrong. I would love for everybody to walk in this door to be cash pay patients and want to buy every pair of glasses I have. I would love that. Right. But that is not, That's not what the you purpose. That is not why I'm, I'm ha hassling y'all to get back in here whenever I tell you you need to be come at, coming back in a year or every six months if you're diabetic or whatever, or even more often if you've got some ocular conditions that need to be watched more closely. I want to make sure the engine's running right. Right. You drive it how you want to drive it, if that makes sense. Glaucoma, you mentioned that. I have glaucoma in my left eye. It kind of explain what glaucoma is. People hear that all the time, mm -hmm. and it's not a, it's, it, it, it's a, it's sometimes can be a difficult situation, but it's a very, yeah. very, it's a controllable situation. You need to get it in hand. Majority of cases right. are controllable. Right. Majority of cases are treatable and, and have no issues, but you got to catch it early. There are some I'm not going to call them rare, but very less than common types of glaucoma, kind of like what happened with you, just uh -huh. bang, it's over almost overnight, and right. then you're, you're scrapping, you know, you're, you're doing everything you can to get that pressure under control, and most conventional treatment for, for glaucoma is typically just eye drops. There are some laser procedures that will, will do some of the same things that the drops do for a few years, but uh, that's the traditional way of doing it. In your case, a little bit more extensive, you know, creating little drainage shunts and... Got it, got yeah. it, yeah, I got me one. Oh, man, and once you get to that point, it's like, oh, we're we're not trying to make you see 2020. We're just trying to make sure that <laughs> eye is not just an ornament. Well, that's, <laughs> well, that's what that guy told us, yeah. what Dr. Stank told me. He said, uh, you know, if this thing doesn't work, it, it looks like a glass eye for you. And, yeah. And, and, uh, Boy, it's amazing how my old brain went, oh, I think it's a lot better than what I anticipated. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, it's, it's, a, it's a good process. We invite you here to uh, Customized Vision Care in the Village Mall, Newport. Uh, and, but, and, and, oh, and, 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 and tell me about the next place. This, by the time, when is this going to air? Uh, probably in the next day or two. All right, well, well. When's the move day? Tell us the I move day. I don't know. Day. You're not, but come on, you're building a building. This, we, should be, we should be filming our next month segment in the new office. Oh, awesome. should be. Awesome. Awesome. So I would, if we aren't moved in by the end of June, I'll be doing exams in the parking lot over there. Because I'm just, <laughs> I'm so ready to get moved. Yeah, yeah, we'll be, we'll be in the new office very, very soon. And it's going to make the process of, uh, of how, when you enter just a, uh, a just, lot better for us. It's, it's like a circle. Yeah. Or a like square. A, uh, it's actually a think more Cubert. Remember that game? No. That's an oh, oh, it's an old video game. It's just it's more diagonal jumps. Anyway, yeah. So you, reference. you got a new place? Yeah, I got a new place. Yeah. It'll be better. Yeah, it'll be better. <laughs> <laughs> Your next appointment may be in the parking lot across the street from where we are. But as of today, when we film, we're still in the Village Mall. That's Do right. Doctor McDowell, thank you, sir. Thank you, man. Always good to see you, Fred. Oh, uh, always good to be seen, not viewed. McCarthy joins us once again, been on our program on a couple of occasions and uh, visiting with her. We're going to talk a little bit about mental health today from Unity Health Newport. And welcome back to the program, Melanie. Hi, thanks for having me. T tell me a little bit, let's go back, tell me a little bit about you, tell me a little bit about how you got here and how long you've been here, and then tell us a little bit about Compass and Clearview and what, what some of the things we're going to talk about today. Okay, so my name is Melanie McCarthy. I'm an LCSW. Um, 
been doing this for a few years now. Um, not really a Newport girl, but not that far away, only about 20 minutes out. Um, so yeah, I think I've been back with Unity this time just a little over two years. So I'm the program director for our Compass and our Clearview units. Uh, Compass is an adult psychiatric unit and Clearview is a geriatric psychiatric unit. Compass typically works uh, with people 18 and older who are dealing with some form of mental health crisis and Clearview is more geared towards your um, dementia patients going through some sort of behavioral crisis. Well, May is a special month when you talk about mental health and we want to get in to talk about some of those issues that, uh, and maybe some of the stigmas that people have about mental health because uh, when you just say the word mental health and then there's a whole array of things that people could think and there's, yes. it is a wide scope and it we is. do want to kind of clarify a few things. So I'm excited to do this. Uh, breaking the stigmas surrounding mental health is something I'm very passionate about. I think that it's important for us to first remember what a stigma is, and that's just a, ne a negative perception that we assign to a certain thing or person or idea. Um, so often with mental health, what we see is this over-dramatized Hollywood yeah. version of diagnosis that are nowhere close to what people are actually dealing with in real life. Um, Currently in Arkansas, about 20% of our population is dealing with some form of mental really? illness yeah. or substance use disorder. Um, and those are pre-COVID numbers. Um, right. COVID actually drove those numbers up when people couldn't get to their providers, were isolated in their house, couldn't get to their AANA meetings, the things that they were using to help them cope with what they were going through. Um, so when we see those numbers, we're likely to see a drastic increase. So interesting to, for you to say and include uh, uh, from a drug standpoint, an alcoholism standpoint, and the mental illness for sure. Talk a little bit about that. So typically what the most common mental illness that your, your family, your friends will deal with will be something along the lines of anxiety or depression mm -hmm. or substance use. Um, for so long we've siloed those two things out, but really they go hand in hand. Often with substance use, what you have is someone who has experienced um, a significant trauma, they're self-medicating. Um, so it's very important to look at mental illness and substance use not as a character default. This is, certainly it's a health problem just as much as heart disease, arthritis, diabetes and we need to care for it in the same way. How do we do that here at Harris, uh, excuse me, at Unity Health uh, Newport and uh, kind of tell us uh, uh, how that works and how people, not as far as the treatment goes, but uh, just tell me a little bit about the process. Okay, so if, well obviously if you're having an emergency we want you to call 911 or go to the emergency room. At that point you'll come work with me and my team okay. and what we would do is uh, we'll give you individual sessions, you would meet with a psychiatrist, uh, people who are specialized in mental illness. Uh, we have within the Unity system Clarity Health and Wellness and what the people working there are experienced therapists and experienced psychiatrists mm -hmm. who are trained in an array of mental illness problems and situational problems. It could be grief, it could be divorce. Um, those things also, if they go untreated, can become a larger problem. You mentioned about COVID and what COVID did, and it, it, it did force people to not get to be able to go to their doctors, and those numbers did rise, and I mean, it's amazing that it did that. Uh, okay, Melanie, tell me about medical uh, detox. So here at Unity, we have the New Vision program available, and that is a medical detox program for people who are coming off of alcohol, opiates, benzos, cocaine, and methamphetamine. So what they do is they help you safely uh, get off of those substances and then help you get to your next step, whether it's a residential rehab or you know an outpatient type rehab setting, whatever is appropriate for you that will suit your lifestyle and your needs. Big need for that everywhere. So if somebody needs help, somebody needs uh, uh, to see you guys and maybe to uh, uh, ask, reach out to y'all, how, how do we do that? Of course, we'll run the numbers, the mm -hmm. phone numbers at the bottom of the screen, but just uh, how do we get in touch with you guys? So 
well, I'll give you the phone numbers, okay. obviously. Um, but you would reach out to the Clarity Clinic. Um, recently, we've been able to acquire a person whose their role is a peer recovery support specialist. Okay. Uh, she's here in the community, and her job is to encourage and support people as they uh, determine their next step in the recovery process. And I'll include her number for you as okay. well. Um, you can call up here anytime and talk to her. And um, the neat thing about her is she's also in recovery, so she's kind of walked that walk. She's been there and she knows the steps that somebody may be facing as they're dealing with and, uh, and overcoming substance use issues. Well, it's, it's something good going on at Unity Health Newport. It's something that's very, very important and we've had the program for a little while now and, and we're really not only established, but it's going well and we're here if you need our, certainly need our services. Melanie, thank you so much. Did we cover everything that we needed to cover? I think we did. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. We appreciate you, Melanie. Michael's Place, Pecan Street uh, in Newport, and it's always a pleasure to get out and meet the uh, the new folks, the newbies as they say, and uh, Kaylin Hutchison joins us, and first of all, welcome to St. Michael's Place. Thank you. Tell us a little bit about you, tell us a little bit about where you're from, growing right up here in uh, the good city of Newport. Tell us a little bit about you, Kaylin. Well, um, as you mentioned, I grew up in Newport. I I was born and raised actually in Newport. I start. I graduated Newport High School in 2013, uh -huh. and then took on going to college over at. Well, I went to ASU Newport for two years, so some people will know me from there. Um, and then I went over to A State and completed out my bachelor's and master's degree in social work. And so, then I took on a job working at. White River for a little while and then I came to Newport and worked at Unity over at Clearview. I want to talk a little bit about social work and of course you've been on the job for three whole days you know when we filmed and this is the fourth day coming in so <laughs> it's all kind of new to you but kind of talk about maybe uh, coming from Unity and, 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 and working in that department and, and what you do and kind of tell me, first of all tell me a little bit about what, what your job description is here and what they have plans for you to do. Okay. Um, so I'm doing social work. I'll be their new social worker and I will also be helping with admissions. So I'll be doing kind of both there and getting people in and also helping them with any troubles they have while here. I understand the admissions part, but in social work and you're talking about your, you know, your education is there. Uh, what all does that entail? And when you're at, when you're at St. Michael's Place, <clears throat> where does the social work part come in and what all do you do? So social work here would be, you know, if families come in and they have troubles, like, you know, it's a hard process putting your family in to a nursing home. Sure. So I'd be there to kind of help, kind of help comfort them in that process and also kind of help them through the process of getting them here. Um, and then once they're here, of course, everybody, it's a new place, new environment. It's not home. So, I mean, it's going to be their new home, but it's not where they're originally from. Right. So. We, so I would go in and just kind of comfort them to help make this their home, to help them to be more comfortable and be at ease and also just to kind of start getting them out and the kind of out and about doing activities and different things and making sure they're do at their best here. Well, I, I do know <clears throat> in the past when we, we've talked to people that have been in this position and so, I mean, it is a, it's a very challenging position because mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's dealing with a, 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 a group of people who have you know, have needs and have needs on a daily basis, and like you say, or, or they wouldn't be here. But uh, tell me about your first three days. What's going on in your first three days? I know it's a learning process for you, but I know you're looking forward to it. Oh, it's definitely a learning process because this everything's different. Um, I'm used to a hospital setting. That's where I pretty much came up in my career. So um, I'm really used to hospital settings. So getting here has been totally different. Um, different style of paperwork, different, you know, different atmosphere, but I really do enjoy it so far. So I'm really excited to continue learning on what I'm going to be doing and getting to know some of the residents more. Well, I do know that it's a great place to be. It's a great place to work. I know that uh, 
uh, you're going to have a great opportunity to uh, learn and grow and develop. And, and, and before we go, I, I do want to ask you this. When you talk about the differences in, in, in working in a hospital compared to this, I mean, the, the, the correlation uh, is that you're dealing with people, and that's the most important thing, I would mm -hmm. think. Yes. Talk about the people and your lack of people and, 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 and what that means to you to be able to work with these people. Well, I've always just been a easygoing person who just wants to help. I've always loved helping out everybody. So that's what drew me to social work. And so, um, and I just feel, you know, with the geriatric population, it's a very overlooked population. Yes. And that's where I want to come in and be a voice for all, of, for all the geriatric folks because they have kind of grown on my heart. Um, so at the first, I, I will be honest, I was a little skeptical of working with geriatrics, but as I got older and started doing it more, I actually really enjoyed it and found and kind of found my calling. Much love for that group yes, of people. That there's definitely no, there's a no doubt. Kaylin, we appreciate you so much for taking time to join us here on the Business Spotlight. We're at St. Michael's Place. She's the new social worker. And uh, let me assure you, it is a job that uh, not anybody can do. And good luck to you. Well, and uh, thank you. I hope we get to interview you again down in the future. We can kind of find out how your weeks and months have been going. Yeah. I was going to say, yeah. <laughs> Congratulations on being the newbie on the block at St. Michael's Place. Well, thank you.